before I start the next question, you must know the meaning of closing stock. Suppose you are running some bookshop and on the day of closing, I mean to say after every one year, whatever the date of closing, that may be 31st December every year, that may be 31st March every year. In the previous question, I have been assuming that the closing date is 31st March 2013. Now the thing is, what is closing stock? It means on 31st March 2013, you will have to do physical stock taking. Physical stock taking means after 31st March, when the shop is closed during the night time, because stock taking is always done after the business. So after closing the shop, you will take out each and every book and will write down in your notebook. Then you will calculate the cost value of the each and every book and the total of those books will be called closing stock. And this process of counting all the stock or goods in the shop or in the factory or in the business, that is called stock taking. So in this way, stock taking is done. One thing more, I have been used this word transaction very frequently. Transaction means any activity, any incident, any event, any happening in the business that has got money value is called transaction. For example, buying goods for rupees 1000, selling goods for rupees 3000, paid wages 1000, paid salary 1000, A starts business with cash with rupees 5000, etc, etc. All these activities or incidents or events are called transactions. One thing more, if any transaction or any event or any incident that may affect your business but that doesn't have the exact money value that activity will not be called transaction. For example, A is the owner of classic bookstore and on, on a particular day he is not feeling well and he didn't go to the shop and he didn't open the shop. So what will happen? Naturally it will affect the sale of that day because that shop or that person won't be able to make any sales on that day. It's a loss. But this type of event or activity is not called transaction because it doesn't have exact money value. Now all these transactions are of two types, cash or non-cash. I mean to say cash transaction or non-cash transaction. Cash transactions are those transactions when the cash comes or goes out. For example, cash sales, when you sell the goods to the customer, he gives you cash. You have received cash. These are the cash sales. This is the cash transaction because cash is involved in this transaction. But in non-cash transaction, transaction is done, but the cash doesn't move. I mean to say it doesn't come in and it doesn't go out. For example, you sell the books to the customer because you are running a bookshop and the customer doesn't pay you the cash immediately, but he promises that he will come back and he will pay you the money for the book after one month. And with this promise, you also agree. It means this was a non-cash transaction. These sales will not be called cash sales. These sales will be called credit sales because the, the person has sold the goods but didn't receive any money. And in the same way, if you buy the goods, you must pay the money to the supplier immediately. But instead of paying cash immediately to the suppliers, you promise him that you will pay the cash after one month or two months or three months and you bring the goods to your shop. These are the purchases, but credit purchases, not cash purchases and this is the non-cash transaction. So it is very important for you when you are doing the questions of accounting equation you must be able to recognize that this transaction is cash transaction or non-cash transaction. Okay, let's learn how to recognize that transaction is cash transaction, non-cash transaction. Suppose you find one transaction in your equation purchased goods 
from S rupees 1000. Now it's not written whether the goods were purchased on cash or on credit. So, but there is something special in this sentence. Goods purchased from S. S is the party, means we have purchased the goods from S, but we have not mentioned whether we paid cash or not. If the question is silent and the name of the party is given, it means that's a credit transaction. It means you purchased the goods from S, but you didn't pay money. So this transaction will be called credit transaction. Suppose in your question you find sales, rupees 5000, what it means? They have not mentioned whether these are cash sales or credit sales. If the question is silent, you will assume that these are the cash sales. Now take another example, sales to C on cash. So it's clearly given in this question that sales to C on cash means this is the cash transaction. You sold the goods to the customer and received the cash immediately. This is cash transaction. Next example, sales to C. It means C is the customer and the goods have been sold to C. But it's not mentioned whether you got the cash immediately or not. In this question, we'll assume that this is the credit transaction because the name of the party is given and they have not mentioned that this is the cash transaction. So sales to C means credit sales to C because the party's name has been given. Cash purchases. It's clearly given in this sentence, cash purchases. It means goods have been purchased and cash was paid immediately. Next sentence, purchases from S on cash. What it means? Goods have been purchased from S on cash. It's clearly written in this sentence, on cash. This is the cash transaction. Next, purchases from S. Now, it has not been mentioned whether the cash was paid or not. But the name of the party is given, that is S. It means purchases, means goods were purchased from S. S is the name of the supplier. This is a known cash transaction. If the name of the party is given in the transaction, it means that is a credit transaction. So purchased goods, that is the cash transaction. If it is said sales, it means that's a cash transaction. If it is written sold goods, it means that's a cash transaction because name of the party is not given. You know it well. Goods are always purchased from the suppliers and then these goods are sold to the customers. Means the person who buys the goods from you is called customer and the person who sells you the goods is called supplier. So in this way, the supplier can be of two types, cash supplier or credit supplier. Cash supplier means you buy the goods from the person and you pay cash immediately. And one is credit supplier. Credit supplier means you buy the goods from the person and he allows you the credit, means you can pay the money after some time, maybe one month, maybe five months. That's something different. And that credit supplier is called creditor. If you have bought the goods of rupees 10,000 from some person and you promise him that you will pay him this money after two months so that person will be called your creditor and it is a liability of the firm now let's talk about the customers you know when we buy the goods we have to sell the goods to someone and that someone is called customer in the same way the customers can be of two types cash customers or credit customers Cash customer means the customer comes to your shop, buy the books and pay you cash immediately. It means that is your cash customer. Suppose another customer comes to your shop and you are running a bookshop. He buys the books for his school and 
at this time he doesn't have money in his pocket and he promises you to pay the money after two months and you agree with that it means that customer is your credit customer and credit customer is called debtor d e b t o r b is silent when you speak debtor not debtor please be careful and debtor means credit customers you have sold the goods and the money will be received later on and debtors is always assets so in this way credit suppliers are called creditors and credit customers are called debtors <music>